So I'm going to take a minute here to talk about classes. Um, we've previewed these a little bit, but I just want to break down uh, kind of how they're, how they're fundamentally set up. Um, I've made a little buffalo class. So let me hide my main um, right here by clicking the thing. And let's just look at, at sort of what it takes to make a class. Um, first and foremost, I'm making my class actually in the file that has my main. So you can declare it um, just like you would a function or something else in the file that you're using. But one of the cool things that we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it on a different video is that I can actually make it so um, I, I make header files or, or basically I can make, um, I can kind of stash these off in another file um, so I can share them amongst programs. So today uh, we're going to make a little buffalo because we love buffalo. So anyways, you'll notice here um, before I get into my main, I have to um, let everybody know what a buffalo is. So I use this keyword class, um, and then I give the name of the class that I want, in this case, buffalo. Then I put in my little brackets, and you'll notice here at the bottom of this, I have a semicolon. Okay, so unlike a lot of these things like an if statement or whatever that we trap in a, uh, those kind of brackets, um, normally wouldn't have a semicolon, but um, for classes we do. And this statement up here is really just a it is a template that says this is all the stuff that's in the class. Okay, so some functions, some variables, and we'll talk about what the public and private mean in a minute. But you know, basically, this is just going to say what makes up the buffalo, and then down here we are going to set the uh, parameters of uh, of kind of the. The, the functions that are inside there and we're going to define them just like we would any other function. The one difference is, is if we have a function that's inside class buffalo, we just add, see how we have here buffalo colon colon, you know, in front of our, our function here because it says void buffalo say howdy. Normally when we define a function, we just put, you know, void say howdy. This is attaching it to um, our, our particular class so we can only use it with um, with the, the class, so to speak. So what did I do? This right here is a wonderful thing called a constructor. I should probably put a comment. Okay, the constructor is basically when I first create an instance of a variable called buffalo, um, then the constructor will run some code. Um, so let's take a look at it. You'll notice here that it's been defined. And in this case, all it's doing is just saying set the hunger level to 10. Um, you know, we have a, a little you know variable here that's, you know, buffalo's got to roam, got to graze, got to eat. Um, so we're basically saying everybody's got 10, okay? Maybe later we'll add a little game, and as this counts, as he takes actions, um, you know, our little buffalo or buffalo herd or whatever, they'll lose uh, little hunger levels. If it gets to zero, then that buffalo will starve and, you know, become grass, you know, circle life. La, la, la. Um, anyways, so what do we have here? We have public variables and we have private variables. So right now we have a public function called say howdy, which is going to do something very simple. I am just going to tell um, everybody what my hunger level happens to be. And then here I have this um, public variable called hunger, hunger level, which basically just means I can manipulate it directly. Um, you know, I could move it into private saying, well, hey, only the buffalo knows how hungry it is. Um, that's probably not something that we're going to uh, directly change. So we, we can think about that later when we're thinking about what we want our buffalo to do. So let's just see how this all works. So I made a buffalo bill and a buffalo bob. Okay, so those got created. So what did I do? I made a new variable. You know, the name is bill. It is of type buffalo. We come into here. And I want to print out Bob's hunger level. I can just do Bob dot hunger level, and you'll notice that hey, it should print out ten, right? Um, because what did I do? I set it out to be ten at the start. Both these guys should be set at ten. Then I am actually going to go into Bill. Notice that we use the little period to access inside the um, object. We're going to access the hunger level directly because it is public, and set it equal to nine. Okay, that's neat. Um, now I'm going to print out and notice that that change happened. Then I'm going to go into Bob and directly set his thing and print it out. So that's just kind of showing you how I can get at a variable 
and um, and change it right away. And then here is Bill saying howdy and Bob saying howdy. Now these are just void, so I just call them straight away, and they're just replacing a C out statement, basically what we were doing before, which is saying, hey, my hunger level is this. Now notice that inside this function here, I can just say hunger level, okay? And it knows that I mean this hunger level. This turns out to be one of the really cool things about variables inside classes is that all of your functions can use these variables without having to pass them around. So that's really our big benefit of, of making a class is that let's say I have, you know, this hunger level needs to be in, you know, a roam function and an eating function and a bunch of stuff. You know, I can just have a bunch of void functions that you know, they don't have to have any arguments when we pass them in and I can just directly access the hunger level, check it. Um, and, and when I update it, it gets updated for the whole object. And so I don't have to worry about it. It's just like, say, the radius of a circle when we do SFML. Once you change that, everything about it gets changed from how it gets drawn to, you know, where it would touch something, you know, things like that. So again, this is a really um, convenient way to create a bunch of variables that you want to be shared across um, things so you can sort of organize them and say, hey, all this stuff belongs together. And then, um, you know, there you go. So let's just run this real quick. I'm going to run this. And you can see here that Bob's hunger level is 10. Bill's hunger level is 10, just as we expected. Okay. Oops, I put a double new line in there by accident. Okay. Bill's hunger level is nine. Awesome. We just changed that fine. Bob's hunger level is three because we changed that. And then, hey, these guys are reporting their modified hunger levels by calling one of their internal functions. Great. Um, so if I wanted to add another quick function here, um, let's just do a, you know, void buffalo, you know, I don't know eat. Eh, I think they more, maybe they munch. How about they graze? Okay. And graze, I uh, won't take any inputs for now. And what does graze do? And I will say, you know, see out, uh, munch, munch, wow, munch all day long as I sing this Munching song. And then I will end the line. And then I will do hunger level, you know, equals 10. So if I actually spend the time to graze, then that's great. So here I will just add that in down here. I will just say Bill. I will do Bob. He's hunger. Bob.graze. Okay. And now Bob will graze and do that. Now let's just see what happens here. If I uh, if I run this, I'm, it's actually not going to work. Why? Because I added the function down here, right? But I forgot to say that this is a um, something that we could use up here. So hey, let's quickly just add in void graze. Okay. And okay, let's run this real quick. And you'll see right here, hi, I'm a buffalo. My hunger level is 10 right there. So it printed it out. And so again, we can share all these things inside here and use them all the time. And maybe I wanted to make it so, you know, say howdy was private. Only these functions could use it inside. So anyways, that's a little taste of how these guys work. Um, we'll get into some, some cooler and adva more advanced stuff uh, soon. Okay.